Hey, this is Wileen Benson, and you are on the Daily Gratitude Call, where we start every day in gratitude. Gratitude is the highest energy state that we can be in. It creates a frequency of positive vibration that attracts positive experiences into our lives. Hey everybody, this is Wileen Benson. This is our daily gratitude call. Um, thank you all for being on the call today. Um, it's Friday morning, super excited for what we get to accomplish today and headed into the weekend today. Uh, Friday for me is always a special day because it's kind of like the end of something and the beginning of something else. Um, Saturday is the day that I clean my vision board off and um, you know, really go through and kind of celebrate what has been in the week. And Friday is sort of like the last day, you know, before I clean my vision board off. And so it's sort of like that last push. Um, it is, has gotten to a point where I don't even really, you know, I have to like think about it or, oh, today's Friday. I better do a, you know, a lot more than I did before. I don't, you know, think of that. It's just kind of a natural thing that happens. And um, actually that leads right into what we're going to be talking about today. Um, some of the things that were shared in the rounds of gratitude that we did just to kind of warm up before we started the recording was grateful for determination. Um, let's see, what were some of the other words? Um, specialized knowledge, uh, consistency. Anyway, some of those things that are sort of like character traits or values that we take on ourselves and when we can do them sort of unconsciously, then we just naturally become better at whatever we're doing and things start happening a lot faster. So that's what I want to focus on today is unconscious competence, gratitude for unconscious competence. When we get to a point where we just are, um, we just do, we just be the type of person that would, um, that we would be proud of. So um, I'm going to set the timer for 90 seconds. We're going to um, do a private silent meditation on gratitude for unconscious competence and write down whatever comes to you. 90 seconds, private meditation, gratitude for unconscious competence, begin. We have a couple new people join. We're focusing, we're doing our private meditation. We're focusing on gratitude for unconscious competence. All right, um, just sending out a welcome to those of you who joined um, since we started the recording. Appreciate you guys being here. Um, today, this um, subject of unconscious competence, not sure why um, this is came to me today, but I feel like it's, um, I'm really glad that we're focusing on it because as uh, as I level up, you know, when I'm changing, when I'm uh, seeing that there needs to be a change in my life, I consciously will put some habits, you know, in place. And um, I know that when that first happens, a lot of times I forget 
to do the habit. And later on in the day, I'm like, oh, dang it, I forgot to do that. And the other thing that happens is I, I used to call it getting stupid. <laughs> it's like all of a sudden I, my brain just doesn't quite work. There's, there's like new synapses that are trying to form because I'm trying to form these new habits. or I'm trying to have this new character trait of, you know, determination or whatever it is that I, you know, I'm developing a character trait, um, on. And I just feel like really wobbly and out of sync. And when something happens, it just kind of throws me off kilter. Um, and I find myself falling back into the old habits quite often. And what a blessing when this habit that I'm constantly, you know, having to be conscious about to make a, a choice to change um, what a blessing when that becomes unconscious, when, you know, one day I'm, I'm going through my day and I'm like, oh, I did that. And I didn't even think about it. It's such a blessing. I'm just so grateful for that um, freedom that unconscious competence gives. Who else has something that they'd like to share? I had something. Okay. So I think that we have eternal natures. And as we follow our Savior Jesus Christ, we are led in the perfect paths to share our gifts and our talents. And when we put when we put those systems in place, then we make the way to automate those practices, our the correct and right practices. And we also create ways just like you've done in this call, we create ways to, to automate those and are to share our unconscious competence because it's part of us. Mm, I love that idea. I love, first of all, I love that word automate because how much freedom that gives us. It just feels so awesome to be automated, not me be automated, but to have, you know, things be automated. And then I never, um, I don't know if I'd never considered, but this is like a new awareness to me that this gratitude call is a system. It's a system of keeping me in gratitude every day and of leveling up my thinking every day and being, um, connecting with people every day. And those are things that I want to do on a daily basis. And this is a system that has, I'm automatically doing that every day. Thank you. Who else? Um, I'll share. Okay. Um, I wrote, I know who I am. I know who my highest self is. I fall short and struggle, but my shortcomings don't define me. Mm -hmm. I'm defined by the powerful, perfect soul inside that is bound by mortal limitations that guide me towards the woman I actually am. Oh, can you read that last statement again? You're guided by... Um, uh, that guide me towards the woman I actually am. Maybe start a little bit earlier. <laughs> uh, there was sorry. something that you okay. said that I was like, wait, I need to hear that again. <laughs> so I am defined by the powerful, perfect soul inside Ooh. that is bound, that is bound by mortal limitations mm. that guide me towards the woman I actually am. Mm. Thank you. Wow, mm -hmm. I, I feel that like coming together, the perfect soul inside and even the limitations of the body coming together to be that perfect woman. That's, I'm, I'm really glad I had you read that again. Thank you. Who else? Hi, I'm Michael. Hey, Michael. I, I was thinking of trained muscles that's the first thing that came to me because i watch a western you know and the guy is um somebody attacks him and without thinking there's a gun in his hand before he even thinks about it mm -hmm. and he's alive because he drew first <laughs> mm -hmm. or faster than the guy thought he did so trained muscles um when you uh are a sports athlete you know the muscles take over and do what they've been trained to do. And so you have confidence in your muscles, in your body, in those 
the things that you train for, um, they become a habit. You know, you get up and you do certain things, and without even thinking about it, you've completed three or four or five of the tasks that you've uh, you have each day. This habit mm. and uh, a trait. Well, that trait is more like a habit, I guess. You learn a trait, and you do it without thinking. And so it's kind of like a habit. Mm -hmm. You've created uh, where you sit down at the computer, you know, and you can do things um, without thinking. You know you're going to write a book today, so you automatically sit down and start working on it. You're going to put pencil your thoughts in, so you have that paper with you, and when they come, you're writing on that paper before you realize you're writing on it. Mm -hmm. And so the last thing I had written down was I've done it so many times, it becomes a natural part of me. Mm -hmm. And Love that. so those are the things I wrote down in that moment. Awesome. Thank you. I think that is what, uh, when we get to a point where um, that muscle memory takes over, I and the you know like you mentioned sports I remember I played basketball in high school and um and I remember being in the middle of uh like a play that we had practiced over and over again and having it actually come through uh perfectly the way that you practiced it in the middle of a stressful you know, game where there's opponents that are trying to oppose you and trying to stop you from, from fulfilling that play. But because of the muscle memory, we, uh, it would just play out, you know, you, you'd tell it, it communicate that you were going to do this play. And everybody was like, with one little tiny movement of, you know, the point guard's hand or whatever, we would know that's the play that we're going to do. And the muscle memory would take over the unconscious competence would take over and nothing could stop us. It, it's um, there. That's a really powerful place to be, where one thing triggers another, and um, and that muscle memory takes over, and and it just is. You get a predictable outcome. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Predictable outcome is awesome. Um, any last thoughts before we shift over to our permission process? This is Rachel okay this reminds me of being it, like the thought that came to me was just the knowing deep inside and being in alignment that's I think that's what's on my mind a lot lately mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm wanting to live more um, in alignment with myself regularly and I think that's a muscle I'm trying to build just mm -hmm. like you're talking about mm -hmm. so when life situations happen and things go on I'm still in touch with mm -hmm my higher self. I know it takes a lot of practice and time, but I have felt myself living in that presence more and it feels good. Awesome. Kind of going back to the sports thing. Um, yeah. Regardless of what's going on, if you've got somebody right in your face with your hand, you know, their hand out in front of you saying, I'm not letting you pass that that muscle memory can take over um, being in, in touch with, with what, um, you know, with who you are and just uh, that it's a really powerful place to be regardless of what's happening. Thank you. Let's go ahead and um, shift into our permission process. Go ahead and take a deep breath. First of all, really grateful for acknowledging that there needs to be a change and then having the capacity to put a system in place that we have a choice. We have the ability to, to practice our muscles, to stretch new muscles, to do something different, to make a new choice. That's a, a blessing in itself to be able to um, have that choice to change. One more deep breath. And then also, i um, really grateful for knowing, recognizing when something's out of alignment and also being able to feel kind of that locked in place, everything feels right, knowing when we're in alignment, just the um, kinesiology of, of our bodies and spirits being in alignment, 
that's uh, I'm really grateful for the ability that we have to even feel that. One more deep breath. And I invite you to um, just be open to be shown through intuition, just listening. What is the one area in your life that would serve you to create a system, to automate, to have it be unconscious? What is one thing in your life, the one most important thing in your life that um, you spend way too much time having to think about it, having to consciously do it what's one thing that would really serve you and just trust whatever comes to you it may not make sense and that's okay what's one thing in your life the one most important area of your life that if you could make a change would be you would be able to create a predictable outcome without even thinking about it And in this area of your life, first of all, what is the limiting belief that's coming up for you about creating automation or a system in this area? Maybe you've tried it before and it hasn't worked, or maybe you feel like, oh, I shouldn't have to do a system. This should, you know, whatever, whatever the limiting belief is, just be open to know what's the limiting belief that would um, interrupt your flow and creating an automation, an automatic system in this particular area. And what is the cost of that limiting belief? When you have a limiting belief, there's always going to be a predictable outcome that this limiting belief produces. So what, what is the outcome that this limiting belief um, creates for you? And if you don't like that outcome, if you're ready to give yourself permission to choose another outcome, say yes. Yes. Yeah. All right. And if you're ready to make that change, go ahead and choose some new beliefs. What are some new beliefs that will um, take the place of that old limiting belief and will also empower you to become unconsciously competent in this area. As you look over this list of new beliefs, I invite you to um, use these new beliefs to um, maybe look over the new beliefs, close your eyes, really breathe them in and allow them to become part of you so that this is like the first step to becoming unconsciously competent, that uh, the muscle memory that Michael was talking about, the trained muscles, your training, your brain, your, your um, commitment, your choice, your decision to be unconsciously competent in this area. So I invite you to um, breathe these new beliefs in, help them become part of you, help them become part. Of, it's, it's like almost like you're um, out practicing, you know, whatever a skill so that it becomes unconsciously competent, that these new beliefs are practice for you. 
that create the unconscious competence. So that when we're done with this call, you can move forward with this call, actually feeling confident that you are competent in this area. And that all it takes is maybe just a few uh, physical movements, actually taking action on this a couple times. And, and then it is, it's who you are. And as you're feeling the change within your body, as you're bringing these new beliefs in and feeling the muscles, the way that they change, the, um, the feeling in the pit of your stomach, the commitment that you're um, and the confidence that's beginning to be developed because of this change that's happening inside of you, um, standing taller, feeling more um, awake and alive, all of the things that uh, that these new beliefs are, are, are creating within your body, the muscle memory, the changes that are happening right now in your body. And with this new person that you're becoming right now in this meditation, what is the one most important thing that you can do as soon as this calls over? What's your inspired shortcut that would really anchor in, give you physical evidence that this muscle memory is actually taking place? that you are becoming unconsciously competent in this area. What is the one most important thing that you could do when this call is over? What's your inspired shortcut to creating not only um, thought muscle memory and uh, cellular muscle memory, but actually doing muscle memory? All right, and in a moment, I'm going to open it up for some shares. I um, want to invite anyone that is feeling like they need an extra boost in this area of becoming unconsciously competent in this particular area of your life. If you need to have, uh, if you'd like, not even if you need, but if you think it would be helpful for you to create more uh, unconscious competence in this area to have a conversation with me, you can do that. 15 minute call. Um, all you have to do is go to askwileen.com. That takes you directly to my calendar and uh, we can schedule a time to, to have a conversation about this and maybe um, just find the one thing that is stopping you from becoming unconsciously competent in this area. Um, this was uh, a really powerful exercise for me. There's a particular area in my life where I have felt like I need to be the one to do to be, to, to change, you know, to, to take action. And I realize that I have been taking action based on what I think the other person needs. And it, I'm constantly derailing myself. I mean, I'm constantly showing up at the wrong time, doing the wrong thing. You know, it's just not, not perfect. And, uh, and I realized that, um, that that's not my job. The, um, the change that I want to make is to go to the person, the inspired shortcut that I got today was to go to the person and ask them what they need. Don't try to figure it out anymore. Just ask them what they need. And I know that I'm capable. I've been trying to do the things that I, you know, that I think they need. So I know I'm capable of doing it, but I just am doing it either at the wrong time or in the wrong way. And so, um, I think, you know, just making that one change, go and ask the person, what do you need? And on a daily basis, um, it's my husband actually. And so I see him on a daily basis and I want to make sure that he is comfortable and um, satisfied and happy. Um, but that's not my job, of course, to make him that way. Um, but I can always ask him, what do you, what do you need? And I know that I'm capable of providing whatever it is that he needs. So that's my habit that I'm going to create my unconscious competent is every day. Just ask, what do you need? Who else has something that they would like to share? I'll share. Okay. If I can talk, I'm getting mm -hmm. better. Um, what really was coming up for me and, and you kind of hit it when you said 
that it, it's that striving for perfection. And I realized that for me, um, we do so many things unconsciously that we don't give ourselves credit for. So for me to take a step back and look at all of the things that I am consciously, to be conscious about the competence, I think that helps us to step into new areas of unconscious competence. I mean, as simple as like driving a car, that really kept coming up for me because my niece who was um, preparing for her driver's test and driving with her and it was just really scary. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and I realized that I was that way too at her age and really didn't become more competent until I was 16. Whereas she's getting her driver's license at 15. And I was just like, I just knew I wasn't ready until I was 16. So there's levels of maturity and, but just looking at all of the places that we are consciously competent that that we are unconsciously competent and becoming more aware that of the times so in that striving for perfection um th there's just a whole process that takes place from going to from the desire to the conscious competent and until it becomes unconsciously competent beautiful thank you i've added to my new beliefs i am conscious of my competence and I love that idea of looking back at things where that we have become unconsciously competent at, and that gives evidence and, that, and there, that's evidence that supports the idea that we can become conscious or unconscious at this skill as well. Thank you. Any last thoughts before we end our call today? All right, so we're going to go ahead and close. Um, tomorrow saturday so we're not going to be on the call on uh, saturday and sunday I encourage you to continue your daily gratitude practice your daily gps um, throughout the weekend and um, i love weekends they're an opportunity to uh, kind of prepare for the next week celebrate what we have done celebrate our competence throughout the week and also um, recommit to new things or uh, getting better at the same things if we're you know we have certain goals that we're trying to become unconsciously competent at so i encourage you to use uh, the weekend to be a time of celebrating your competence in you know what you have been able to up level and change in your lives and then also setting those new um, setting systems systems in place that help you to become competent at what you want to become competent at and um, and um, you know, taking action on those things too. So thank you for being on the call today. We look forward to our uh, next time together, Monday morning, 7 a.m. Mountain Time. And thank you, love you guys. Thank you. Hey, thanks so much for listening. And I encourage you to tune in every day to the Daily Gratitude Call. And the Daily Gratitude Call happens live every weekday morning love to have you join. So to find out how to join live, go to my website, wileenbenson.com. Thanks for tuning in.